Well, good afternoon, everybody, and uh, welcome to beautiful Muncie Creek Township, uh, the 84th House District. Today's a bittersweet day for us, um, a day that I wish Representative Garth Everett was standing right here with us, celebrating this boat launch opening up. And um, But we're going to make him proud, and we're going to make sure that his legacy is never forgotten in the 84th House District. Uh, Garth meant so much to so many of us and worked so hard for our area. And um, when the boat launch closed in 2016, Garth went to work. And I tell you today that if it wasn't for Garth, we wouldn't be standing here and that boat launch wouldn't be there. Um, it was Garth who saw this through. And so it's only appropriate today that as we uh, kick off this new launch and we open it up, this, this dedication ceremony, um, that uh, we do it in honor of Garth Everett. Uh, we have multiple people who are going to provide remarks today, and we're going to open up with Senator Gene Yaw. Senator? Uh, I'm not going to really talk about the boat launch itself. Uh, other people are going to do that. Uh, but what I would like to talk about is Garth. And uh, for those of you, you know, Garth was a lawyer. And the Lycoming Law Association has a, a tradition when a lawyer passes, they do a resolution and there's a committee appointed to do like a history of the person and a profile. And, and, and that's what's put then in the official record. Um, I was fortunate enough to be named the chairman of that committee. And as you know, as chairman, when a lot of times what you do is whatever the project is, you get to do it. Now you don't get to do it. You're the only one that'll do it. So in any event, um, what I would like to do is uh, uh, I'm going to read the most of what we submitted to the court uh, for Garth's resolution after in memoriam. Um, and I think that the reason I'm doing it this way is I think that this tells what Garth Everett was. The Honorable Garth D. Everett, a 12-year member of the Lycoming Law Association, died on January 28, 2023, at the Gatehouse in Williamsport, Pennsylvania. Born on January 28, 1954, Garth was the son of David and Maxine Everett. Garth was a soldier, a lawyer, a legislator, a husband, a father, a grandfather, and a friend. He was also an 18-year survivor of cancer. Very few can match or repeat those accomplishments in life. Garth Everett was a very unique person. Garth was born and raised in Mentoursville, Pennsylvania. He graduated from Mentoursville High School in 1972, where he met his best friend and future wife, Sue Schultz. Garth graduated from Penn State with a ROTC commission in the United States Air Force in 1976. At the time of his graduation, he married his high school sweetheart, Sue. While in the United States Air Force, Garth and Sue became the parents of Megan and Corinne. During the time on active duty, Garth rose to the rank of Lieutenant Colonel. Upon his retirement from the Air Force, Garth returned to Pennsylvania and enrolled in the Dickinson School of Law and graduated in 2000 and was a class speaker at the graduation ceremony attended by former Governor Tom Ridge and Penn State football coach legend Joe Paterno. As a lawyer, Garth's specialty became representing municipal clients. That background led to his interest in the legislative process, and in 2006, Garth ran for the office of state representative for the 84th District, following his classmate, Brett Feast, who held the office previously. Garth served in the Pennsylvania House of Representatives from 2007 until 2020, 
when he retired from the legislature. Upon his retirement, Garth and Sue spent more time with family and friends. They devoted a considerable amount of time to traveling around the United States as well as spending time at the, his beloved cabin on the Loyal Sock in Plunkett's Creek Township. Sorry about that. During the time Garth did the grandfatherly thing. He took his grandson to guitar lessons and he coached his granddaughter in soccer. Garth lived life to the fullest. His approach to life is described by Hunter S. Thompson as the following. Life should not be a journey to the grave with the intention of arriving safely in a pretty and well-preserved body, but rather to skid in broadside in a cloud of smoke, thoroughly used up, totally worn out, and loudly proclaiming, wow, what a ride. There is no better description of Garth's philosophy of life and the way he lived it. For all who knew Garth, the words being Garth, G-A-R-T-H-E-D, Garth is a verb, have a special and very profound meeting, bringing back memories of long nights, intense discussions, and very slow mornings. I know I even talked to Megan about this. I mean, it's absolutely true. Close related and an integral part of being Garth was Garth's invitation to let's have one more last beer. I experienced that a lot. As a soldier, a lawyer, a legislator, a husband, a father, a grandfather, and a friend, our law association suffered a loss and our community suffered a loss and our state suffered a loss in the passing of Garth D. Everett. Garth's motto, in his own words, was higher, faster, harder. That was what we presented, and, uh, you know, as a friend of Garth's that spent a lot of time with him, uh, what was written really describes his life. The one other thing that I will say about my personal relationship with Garth is, you know, he was on, we were both on the Chesapeake Bay Commission where the water from this, from the, the, the Susquehanna obviously goes to the Chesapeake. And he got involved as a result of working with uh, Representative Russ Fairchild in Union County and then Garth got involved and he got me involved in it. And we had a lot of interesting conversations and meetings uh, and Sue traveled uh, with him to many of the meetings uh, with for the Chesapeake Bay Commission and the contact in this boat launch and the idea that it that it carries on and the legacy continues downstream to the Chesapeake is a real honor to Garth and I, I'm just very very happy and proud to be able to consider myself a friend of his and to be here uh, with this dedication of this boat launch. And as it's already been said, without him, this would not have, have happened. I mean, I remember him talking about it many, many times about changing the boat launch and how dumb it was where it was before and all those kinds of things. So thank you all for coming. And it's a privilege for me to be here with you. Thank you. Thanks to Senator Yaw, and, and hopefully don't do donuts or skid in the uh, new, new uh, stones here when, when you pull into the parking lot. Um, we I thought I'd, I'd give you a little bit of background about so how this came to be. So I'm Tim Schaefer, I'm the Executive Director of the Pennsylvania Fish and Boat Commission, and Eric Hussar, who's our, our local commissioner here, I remember he and I sitting in Garth's office, Garth was in a pair of shorts in his office, you know, I'd go in the suit thinking I gotta you know, be all formal, he's in a pair of shorts. Um, and talking about this project and what happened was is the boat ramp just really never should have been built where it was built. Those of you uh, who are from here uh, know that that'll eventually grow in as fewer and fewer people are over there. 
Um, but so then what do you do? We didn't want people to get stuck in the mud out there. So actually our former commissioner, Bill Warbeck, um, who I just talked to the other day, he, he was sorry he couldn't be here. He was also really involved. Um, we started looking at, is there another site that we could build this ramp on? And, and you know, space is pretty at a premium and limited along the river. So what we decided to do was to be as efficient as we can with the footprint that we had. And Garth led the way on capital budget authorization and, and release of money um, from the state capital budget. Uh, ended up being $356,000 we had to acquire. I think it's a three acre parcel here. And then it wasn't just as easy as doing this, you know, just putting down some stone. We worked with the Delaware Nation um, to make sure that we weren't disturbing the soil here. We actually had a, an archeologist on site while we were building the ramp. Um, and what we came up with was this design where you could use the existing parking lot, pave it, have that be a place to put your trailers, make efficient use of the Garth, Garth would like that. You're not wasting state resources. And then, and we, we see this at a lot of our accesses where you have a, sort of a, a, a road down like, uh, like you see here where people can park um, with their canoes and kayaks and design it in a way like we know it's going to flood, right? You know that this is going to flood. So this, this parking area, the road, the ramp itself is designed uh, to accommodate those flows that are going to happen here. But this would absolutely not have happened without Garth. And I just, I think the amount of time that it took and the persistence sort of is emblematic of what Garth Abbott was like um, in the Capitol in Harrisburg. And as someone who works a lot with legislators like Representative Ham and uh, Senator Yaw, I mean, there, there are not, you need, need to realize how unique Garth is, or, uh, you know, was in that building um, in Harrisburg. He, he didn't let the highs get too high. He didn't get the lows, lows get too low. He knew that this was going to happen. Like he, he just always was really steady in his belief uh, that this, that this boat ramp uh, would, would come to pass. It's going to serve uh, power boats. You can see here with the ramp here, it's also going to serve canoes and kayaks. Um, I did make a uh, mention to a couple of folks locally. We, we gladly enter into partnerships with local municipalities, local groups. If you are with the township or the borough or another local group and you think, man, I'd love to see this or that here on this site, talk to us. Because our agency, we only get funding through fishing, fishing license and boating, uh, boat registrations primarily. But if there are, you know, pavilion, park-like amenities, benches, whatever, you know, things you think would might make this place better, we'd love to hear from you. And, and we would gladly collaborate with anybody who would want to do something like this uh, here at the site. Um, Paul Urbanic is our chief engineer, uh, head of our Bureau of Engineering. He'll be here to answer any questions in detail if you have um, about the site and how it was built. Um, last thing I just want to say before turning it over uh, to the mayor, wear your life jacket. And I know Garth was a big advocate for this as a, as a kayaker. 80% um, of the boating fatalities happen in Pennsylvania every year as a result of people not wearing their life jackets. Come November 1st through April 30th, we have a mandatory life jacket wear in Pennsylvania. All canoes, kayaks, and boats under 16 feet, you have to wear your life jacket that time of year. It's, it's irrefutable. You go in the river in December or January, you're probably not coming out. So I think is, you know, if, if that could be a lasting, your lasting gift to Garth is wearing your life jacket and boating safely here um, when you use this, use this site, um, that'd be a nice, nice thing to pass along. So thanks to everybody for being here. Thank you to the family. And then and most of all, thanks to Representative Ham. I was with Eric up um, at Mansfield University. I'm going to get a phone call. And I'm, you, know, you get a call from a state rep, but it's usually not good, right? Like the phone lights up like, oh boy, what's, what's, what's going on? And he had the idea to name this after Garth. We don't normally do this. We've never done this before, literally anywhere in Pennsylvania. So it's a real testament to Representative Ham's foresight and the dissenter to y'all uh, for his persistence. He told me a story yesterday that it uh, you know, took something to get this through the state Senate and we appreciate his work doing that. So thanks to everybody. With that, I'll turn it over to the mayor. So I, uh, I see a ton of friends here today and that was kind of uh, Garth's thing. As soon as you met Garth, he was your friend. And um, he didn't really have, uh, I wouldn't call it constituents or voters, tons and tons of friends because those people were important to him. And the things that were important to Garth's friends were right in the front of his mind. And this boat launch, as, as soon as he found out it was an issue that we had lost this valuable resource and access to it, Garth got to work right away. And uh, you know, it, it took a lot of time, a lot of work, a few beers, but uh, here we are today. And uh, if it weren't for Garth, 
we wouldn't be standing here and uh, um, I was very blessed and I think we were all very blessed to have him as a friend and uh, I just wish he could be here to, to see it but I know he's looking down and uh, once again thank you Garth and, and thank you all for coming. Uh, I'll share a story. Um, I uh, obviously wanted to do something for Garth, and, and we wanted to, to make sure that his legacy, you know, is, is always carried on. And I got a phone call from the mayor. It was Mayor John Ort who called and said, Joe, we're doing this new boat launch. What if we named it after Garth? So it wasn't my idea. It was, it was the mayor's idea. And... Uh, and so the mayor and I discussed it, and, and we got to work. I put the call to, to Tim Schaefer, uh, who does an outstanding job as the executive director of Fish and Boat. Um, but it was the mayor's idea, and I, I want to make sure we recognize that because um, we, should, you know, we should always recognize uh, you know, those. So uh, next up is Sue. Sue? I just want to take the opportunity to thank all of you for coming. It means the world to me. And um, when Garth and I left in 1976 in the Air Force, we were going to Biloxi, Mississippi. And we really thought we would never move back in the area again. We just thought we would take off and do our own thing. And then within 10 to 12 years being in the Air Force, we could not wait to come back home. And it was because of our family, our lifelong friends, Penn State, and um, the cabin. He loves the cabin. So when he decided that we were gonna come back home, he always said to me, Sue, I just wanna give back to the community that I love so much. And I really want to do something important that helps the community. And I think this dedication today would just mean the world to him. I know he worked on it very hard and I want to thank all of you gentlemen because they were a big, big part of it. But I truly, from the bottom of my heart, thank you. And I feel very blessed that you guys are all in my life. So thank you. So I'm now going to ask Sue uh, Corey, Matt, Megan, to, to come on over. Um, and, and I'll just share a quick story of um, legislation isn't easy in Harrisburg. Uh, this week I was told it takes six years, typically, to get a bill passed. Um, you introduce it, it dies. You reintroduce it, it dies. You reintroduce it, it dies. And so... Um, it's not easy getting legislation through in Harrisburg. Uh, we had our battles in the House, and I, I want to make sure that the Senator is recognized for his work because it was late at night when I get a phone call that they're amending the bill for naming this boat launch after Garth. And the Senator, without hesitation, jumped on it for us. He gave an impassioned speech in his Senate caucus meeting and I was told that you could have heard a pin drop in that room after Gene was finished. Two hours later, after 10, my phone rang and Gene was successful in getting all the amendments off that bill and getting that bill done. And so this was a team effort. This was something, um, again, that's not easy in Harrisburg. And so I wanna thank the Senator also uh, for his work, um, because without him, I, I'm not sure that we get the bill passed. So um, with that being said, every time we pass legislation in Harrisburg, we have an opportunity to uh, have it framed and signed by the governor. And uh, of course, they did that for this bill also. But I made a special request to the governor that he send a second signed copy over for us. And uh, I wanted to make sure that I was able to secure that and then present that to the family. So today uh, I have a signed copy 
of that piece of legislation. Uh, naming this boat launch after uh, Representative Garth Everett, and uh, that is for the family. So, Sue, you're very welcome. Thank you. Yes, sir. Hi. This is the full legislation. So, we want to thank you again for being here. Uh, Tim tells me that they've done a lot of ribbon cuttings at a lot of boat launches and um, they never have anyone show up. <laughs> so he was uh, just saying how impressed he was uh, with the amount of people who showed up. So thank you. And, and I think it, it just shows how much Garth meant to all of us, to our community, that you would take a little time out of your Friday afternoon to be here in honor of Garth and so that we... Uh, together can remember Garth and uh, carry his legacy on. So thank you so much. Uh, at this time, we're going to uh, move towards the boat launch. Yep. We're going to do a ribbon cutting. Three, two, one.